Hello everyone, this is Robert. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about these um, little transceivers. These are um, Nordic NRF24L01s, I think, and they're a really cheap and easy way to send data back and forth between an Arduino or another microcontroller. They're super, super cheap, and with a couple little hacks, you can actually make them quite reliable. So feel free to use the chapters, jump around, and um, let's get started about what these are and why you might wanna use them. So I know I'm a little bit late to the party on these. These are not new by any means. These have been around for a long time and they're, they're a good known solution for doing wireless communication with Arduino. But truth be told, I'm not very good at programming. That's kind of my weakest skill. And so I'm always a little bit intimidated when I have to do something with code, you know, especially on a microcontroller. These are a good solution if you are like me and are a little bit daunted by code and you're maybe a little bit more novice. Doing something like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is a lot more challenging, at least for me. Um, so sitting down and programming like, you know, pairing with a Bluetooth device and yeah, that stuff is just really daunting for me and I don't really want to mess with it. So these are a nice path forward. These are transceivers, which means that they can do bi-directional communication. They have a relatively long range to them, especially if you get this antenna variety. You can get them in the antenna variety and also these little um, chip trace variety as well. And you can actually get some reasonable distance out of this. They claim like 1100 meters or something, which is probably a bit high, but definitely going across your home. Um, I have something in the far back of my yard, maybe two, three hundred feet away and it's going through my house, through my garage, and I'm getting perfectly fine signal on that. The other nice thing about these is that they can be pretty reliable. Um, check out the section towards the end of the video on how to actually make these reliable. They don't come as very reliable. You can make them into that. And lastly, they are very, very inexpensive. Um, I have some links down below. Of course, there are Amazon affiliate links, but you can get like a five pack of these for maybe 15 bucks, and then maybe a five pack of these for like $10. So they're actually really, really cheap to use. So um, yeah, let's go into kind of a little application of these. So here's my particular application. I have this kind of outdoor weather station, which is this stuff over here, and then I have the inside receiver over here. This is just kind of the proof of concept prototype. This is for my indoor wind chimes. The problem is I need to take wind speed data from outside and then bring it inside. And so I need some sort of wireless communication between those two. Right here I have a box that houses some electronics, some batteries, things like that, solar panel connected over here, and then one of the little um, NRF transceivers right there. And you can see that you can mount it on the outside of the box with a little grommet and you can get a nice little weather sealed connection. And then we have the actual um, weather station right here. This is from SparkFun. And then inside I have this little guy, which is an OLED screen hooked up with another transceiver down here. And the thing to note is I've got a chip antenna on this, and then I have the antenna version on this. The nice thing about these transceivers is you can kind of mix and match. I might not want to have the antenna one on the inside unit, but you can use one of each and they talk just fine. So I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in. We'll um, take a look at this and I can move the wind speed and show you what's going on. So this is a little tricky to get everything into the shop, but here's the um, wind speed gauge. So we've got the wind speed as the um, instantaneous as the top, we've got the average as the second, and then we have the max as the third. And I can spin that and you can see the updates and pretty much as simple as that. And it works really nicely, really quick, nice and responsive, yeah, no issues. So nice little wireless communication between the two units. So let's talk about the actual reason for making this video, which is the reliability of these. When I first started using them, I was having issues where maybe after a few hours, it would kind of disconnect and they wouldn't talk anymore. Or, you know, maybe after a week, I would only get maybe a few days out of it and then all of a sudden it would stop working and I'd have to unplug it, plug it back in, and then it would start working again, sometimes for an hour, sometimes for a few days. And what I learned was the bigger the packet of information you sent, the less reliable it became. After doing a little bit of digging, I realized that the um, 
voltage regulator on these is most likely undersized and not really adequate for these so that when you actually send and receive information back and forth, it kind of browns out and then the whole thing will just kind of um, stop working. So in the links down below, I have versions that include these. This is a little um, voltage regulator breakout board that just plugs directly into them like that and it actually gives it adequate power and you don't run into those brownout issues. And you can see that's exactly what I have right here and that's what I have on the other one for the um, outdoor weather station. And this actually allows them to communicate properly rather than browning out every time you send it a message or you know 50% of the time. It works with both the antenna version and the chip antenna version. And another thing that I did, which I'm not sure is 100% necessary, but you can see it right there. I have a 10 UF, 10 microfarad cap that is bridged across the voltage and the ground. And this just acts as another little um, buffer for those surge. Apparently when it sends messages um, or packets of data, there's just kind of a little bit of spike of current, just that instantaneous spike of current, and it needs just a little bit extra in the voltage regulation department. The power supply from the Arduino is just fine. Arduino's over there. Power supply from that is just fine, but it needs just that extra little boost. So having these little voltage regulator boards and having that 10 microfarad cap has worked wonders for me. Um, this whole th setup has been going for, I don't know, like two months without any issue. So that makes it perfectly reliable. And this is the little trick that I figured out that made these things work just fine for me. Before we wrap this video up, I just kind of wanted to give you a couple little final notes um, about everything. Regarding the library, I do have an Arduino library linked down below that was the one that worked out well for me. There's many of them out there, but this one was um, maybe more up my speed in terms of ease of use. There's a lot of good examples and you can just kind of, you know, copy and paste, remove some stuff, add some stuff and makes it real easy. If you're familiar with doing that, um, you know, adding in a library and then just kind of modifying it to suit your needs, this would be a good one to use. There are some others out there that give you more functionality, but this worked out for me. Additionally, you can use this with pretty much every other microcontroller. There's a lot of support out there and there's a lot of other libraries. So if you wanna use this for Raspberry Pi and things like that, there are multitude of libraries out there. Um, let's see, I think the final thing that is worth mentioning is these are 3.3 volt tolerant. Uh, you will burn them out if you use them at five volts. Um, that really shouldn't be an issue. I believe that this little voltage regulator handles that so you can use five volts into this, but if you're not getting these and you're just getting the bare modules for whatever reason, um, you will need to be paying attention to the fact that it's 3.3 volts only, not five volts. So that may or may not be an issue, but I would absolutely not buy them bare. I would always buy them with this little breakout. Check the links down below for that. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more information about using these. I wish this is the video that I found when I started using them. It would have saved me a lot of time. So hopefully it saves you some time as well. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, be on the lookout for more project updates, more updates on the um, indoor wind chimes. Thanks again. See you next time.